Praise the Lord. God bless you so much for today. Today is a, a special day. One more time. We bless God for today. Today we want to share a message entitled, After You Are Born Again, What Next? After you are born again, what next? Because it is not enough to receive Jesus as your Lord and your personal Savior and just begin to attend church for attending sake and just begin to live your life anyhow. No. Just like you cannot give birth to a baby and just neglect the baby. You kill the baby. The baby may, may, may end up con uh, uh, contaminating diseases. The baby will be affected with a lot of things negatively. So after you are born again, after you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and your personal Savior, what next? That is what we want to look at. There were a lot of people receive Jesus as their Lord and their personal Savior and proper foundations are not laid. Because proper foundations are not laid, they begin to live their life anyhow. They think Christianity is whatever I mean, they, they do not think, take their time to learn or certain uh, 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 pastors and teachers do not help them to establish them. But there are things that are fundamental. There are foundations that we cannot do away with. If you, if you want to go far in God, if you want to grow in God, as a pastor, as an, an evangelist, or as an apostle, if you want to build people up, if you want to make disciples, Jesus said we should go and make disciples of all nations. We do not make disciples uh, 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 just by reading scripture and standing on it and just believing God for their miracles, for their breakthrough. Yes, it is important, but we must build the foundation because we are building a house. And the foundation is very important. If the foundation is weak, if the foundation is not good, your building will, 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 will break down, will be of no importance. So it is very, very important. Quickly, let us look at Hebrews chapter 6. We are looking at something from the book of Hebrews chapter number 6. I read from verse 1. It said, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. Paul had a problem with the Hebrews. Okay, the, the things that they were taught, the foundations that they were laid, they were not growing, they were not maturing. They were at the same stage where they were left. So any all the time, the, the teacher must go back. The pastor must go back teaching them the fundamental things. They must grow above and move on. Hallelujah. That tells us the foundational things are very, very important. Yes, they must move on. But the foundation had first been laid or must first be laid. If the foundation is laid, then the building on can, can continue or can come on. But unfortunately, the Hebrews were having problem in, in, in continuing with the foundation that had been laid. But in this generation, a lot of Foundations are not laid. All proper foundations are not laid. So we have to lay certain foundations, which are very, very important. In, 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 in uh, uh, verse 2, we say, Of the doctrine of baptisms, and of laying on of hands, and of the resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. It means that when anybody comes into Christ, these are the things, as they receive Jesus as their Lord and their personal Savior, pastor, evangelist, apostle, prophet, teacher, these things, they must be taught these things. These are fundamental things. They must be taught. Repentance from dead works. Why they should not go back again from where the Lord picked them from? Faith towards God. They must have faith toward God. No faith towards a minister or a particular church or a particular organization. But faith towards God. The doctrine of baptisms. No baptism, but baptisms. That's the bapt water baptism and Holy Spirit baptism. They must be taught. We, we, we must teach them to really understand what these things are. And of laying on of, of hands so that people will not be running helter skelter, just going and, 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 and bringing their head. And all, kind of, all kinds of hands are being laid on them. 
Because they are not taught. They must be taught. It is your responsibility. It is mine to teach the people after they are born again. Hallelujah. And of the resurrection from the dead, we must teach them. Because the Bible says that it is appointed unto man to die once and after this judgment. So we must teach about that too. It is very important. And of eternal judgment, that after all things, we are going to be judged. We will give account. We must teach. This must be fundamental thing. So that when, when, when after these foundations are laid and the person is starting their Christian life, they will start it well and they will start it better. But most often we don't lay these foundations. So we have a lot of people in the church today. They don't even know who they are. They don't know what, what they are about. The, the, the few challenges that, that, that they don't know that when challenges come even their way, it is for their own betterment. When they go through fire, the fire is just to help them, to purify them, to, 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 to destroy that, that, that gross and, and that unwanted things in them, to, for them to emerge as better people. They do not understand because the foundations were not laid. So let us lay that, those foundations. Psalm, Psalm 11 verse 3 says, If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? If the foundations be destroyed what can the righteous do let us lay good foundations the foundation which is the doctrines of christ hallelujah and in some uh, 82 verse 5 is it they know not neither would they understand they walk on the they walk on in darkness all the foundations of the earth are out of course the foundations are destroyed. We do not lay proper foundation. So people are not knowledgeable of certain things. So Bible says that they walk on in darkness. People are walking in error. And they'll call scripture and, 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 and begin to defend themselves, to sue themselves. No, because they do not know. They lack that knowledge. And it is your responsibility. It is mine. To lay those foundations in their lives. When a baby is giving birth, we cannot leave the baby bare. We cannot just leave the, allow the baby to live anyhow. No. There are things we must, when they are growing up, there are things we must teach them. There are certain things we must teach them not to touch. Things we must teach them not to eat. If they do anything, you see, it, it, it is the same thing. It is the same process. It is not enough to get that number and have this number of people in Manchester. No. Are we making disciples? Is it when I come, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith? Will he still get people who have faith in him, who are still expecting him? Hallelujah. Amen. If the foundation is destroyed, we are tossed to a fro. That you see, you see, that, that because proper foundations are not laid, people are not taught properly. When they receive Jesus, the ref, the good foundations were because good foundations were not laid. They hear this today, they are just following. Somebody sharing about the encounter with God, they are just following. Somebody doing it, they are just following, just following anything at all and everything. Hallelujah. We must build as we lay the foundation. Then we begin to build line upon line, precept upon precept. Here a little, there a little. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 14. It said, then we will no longer be little children, tossed like waves and blown out about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery and by clever strategies that will lead us astray. People are trickery. People are, 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 are strategically leading people astray. Because they want to make fame. Because they want to make money. Because they want to be popular. They want to be known as... Uh, 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 as for them, they have a lot of followers. People are being trickery. And people are leaving churches. People are leaving... It's just migration. People are migrating from one church to the other. People are frustrated. They are giving up. Others who are going back. Because what we didn't tell them the truth. Let us learn to lay the good foundation. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Because if you gain the whole world and lose your soul, what do you gain? You gain nothing. Now that you, if you have received Jesus Christ as Lord and person, say, I'm, you see, I'm picking from this point because previously we have shared certain messages which says that uh, 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 how to sh uh, share the gospel effectively or how to preach the gospel effectively. So we, 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 we are coming from this angle with the mindset that you have received Christ or you have shared the word of God with people. They have received Jesus Christ of Nazareth. They have received Jesus as their, as their Lord and their personal Savior. So there are things we must make them aware. That now that they have received Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior, you have received forgiveness for your sins. They have received, one, forgiveness for their sins. Two, they are new creation. They are new persons. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Three, you are now part of God's family. We must let them, make them aware. You are now part of God's what family? First John 3, verse 1 and 2. For God has now given you his righteousness. His righteousness has been imputed in us or to us. Romans chapter 3, verse 21, 22. 5. You now possess eternal life, the God kind of life. You have the God's life inside of you. Hallelujah. First John 5, 11 to 12 and John 5, 24. You see, if, if people are aware of these things, it emboldens them, it strengthens them, it empowers them. It makes them know who really they are and what they've come into, the family they now belong to. They understand better. Hallelujah. And they can do a good warfare with that. Your name is now in the book. Your name is in the book of life. Your name is in the book of life. Revelation chapter 21 verse 27. Your life is hid with Christ in God. We must make them aware that now that they have received Christ as their Lord and their personal Savior, their lives are hid with Christ in God. They are in a secure place. Hallelujah. Colossians 3 verse 3. You now sit in the place of authority and power. They are seated together with Christ in heavenly places, far above all principalities and power. That is a place of authority. We must make them aware and make them know that. Hallelujah. Now that you are born again or a child of God, the, the, the things you need to grow spiritually are similar to the ones you need for your physical growth or survival. The things you need to grow spiritually are similar to the things you need to grow physically. Hallelujah. Something like oxygen. You need oxygen. Hallelujah. You need what? Oxygen. You need food. You need shelter. Hallelujah. You need exercise. To exercise, you must exercise your, 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 your how do you call it, your, your body. Exercise is good for the body. You must exercise physically. And, and, and the next point is that you rest. You need rest to survive physically. These are the things you need. These are some of the things you need. Let me say that. Hallelujah. So one, prayer is that oxygen. So we are comparing it now with the spiritual ones. We say you need oxygen, you need food. Because you need to eat to, to, to live. We, we are not living to eat, but we eat to live. Okay? You, you need oxygen. You, you, you need food. You need shelter. You need to exercise your body. Right? And you need to rest so that the body can, can, can revive and can heal itself from any wound and from any tiredness and from any weakness. Hallelujah. So you need all this. So one, prayer is that oxygen you need. Bible reading and studies. And Bible study is the food you need. Shelter. You need shelter. That, that shelter is the fellowship of the brethren. You need the fellowship of the brethren. Attending church service is the shelter you need. I, I, I will break them down as, as we go on. Witnessing and, or, or so we need or evangelism is the exercise you need. Hallelujah. Living a worry-free life is the rest you need. And there are many things you need, okay? 
you, 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 you need water bath. In, uh, I mean, you need to be taught. I mean, about water baptism, as I said, these are some of the foundations. Holy Spirit baptism, uh, 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 speaking in tongues, repentance from dead works, and faith toward God, laying on of hands, resurrection from the dead, eternal judgment. You need to be taught this. You need all this. Is, hallelujah. So quickly, let's begin to tackle them. Prayer, okay? So as, as, as people come into into the house of God. They, they are new, they are born again. They are new believers. Let me put it that way. They are new believers. We must teach them. There are a lot we must teach them. Hallelujah. As, as we said. So prayer. We say prayer is what? The oxygen. Okay. It is described as a divine intercourse or communication between man and God. A communication between man and God. It is the offering of the emotions and desires of the soul to God. In the name of Jesus and by the help of the Holy Spirit. Communication between God and man or a divine intercourse whereby an exchange is made. You pour, you, you talk to God, okay? You talk to your father. You communicate just as when the baby needs something, the baby, the baby begins to cry. Okay? The baby, the baby begins to cry. So you talk to God, you talk to him, you pour your heart. You thank him. You you just pour your heart. You, you 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 ask him your supplication. You ask. You pour your heart. You communicate with God. Prayer helps us overcome temptation and 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 and, and traps. It's not only talking to God, but as we pray, it helps us to overcome temptation temptations and traps. So we must teach the people that prayer is important because Jesus told the disciples when he when he went he took them to Gethsemane to go and pray. Okay, he came back and they were sleeping. He came back and they were sleeping again. Then in Matthew 26, 41, he said, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. For the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So it means that when we, we, we are not watchful and prayerful, we enter into temptation. We cannot stop the temptation from coming. The challenges, we cannot stop it from coming. The trials, we cannot stop them from coming. But as we pray, we we'll always be on top. Because as we pray, we communicate with God. He begins to speak to us. He begins to commune with us. He begins to direct us. He begins to instruct us. He begins to empower us. So that whenever the challenge comes, whenever the temptations and the trust comes, we, we, trust comes, we always overcome them. So it is very, very important. Hallelujah. We, you must learn to make prayer a practice, a daily practice. A daily practice. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, it says pray without ceasing. It means pray constantly, always be praying. Always be in communication. It's not that you must sit at one place. No, as you walk, you can communicate with your father all the time. Hallelujah. Communicate with God all the time. Where, as you walk, and you are bathing, where, just be communicating with him, whatever it is, just communicate with him. And the next point is, you must offer, prayer must be offered to the father. We don't pray to Jesus, we pray to the father. In the name of Jesus, by the enablement of the Holy Spirit. So in John 16, 23, Jesus said, On that day ye will not ask me for anything. Truly, I tell you the truth. Or I tell you emphatically, whatsoever you will ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Jesus said, we pray to the Father in his name. He said, whatsoever we shall ask the Father in his name, in the name of Jesus, the Father will grant it to us. And, and we also said that we need food. You need food, right? You need food. And, 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 and Bible, we say Bible reading and Bible study is that food. God's way is a spiritual food. And your, spirit, and your spiritual life needs nourishment. Your spiritual life needs nourishment. And that nourishment comes from the Word of God. As we read the Word of God, and as we study the Word of God, we receive nourishment. So we eat the Word of God by reading and by studying. Hallelujah. 
The Bible is a spiritual book. The Word of God is a spiritual book. And you, we, we, we need the help of the Holy Spirit. So anytime we want to read the Bible, we pray for the leading and for the guidance of the, of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We need the leader of the Holy Spirit to communicate and to communicate and impart its meaning and message to us. If not so, we will only get that knowledge, okay, and become intellectual, intellectuals, and not spiritual. Okay, so we need the Holy Spirit to help us in this. God's word directs our lives. God's word directs our life. We are treating God's word now. God's word point. God's word directs our life. Psalm 119 verse 105 says that, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So as we begin to study, as we begin to read, the word of God begins to direct our path, begin to lighten, our, 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 becomes a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. The word of God begins to instruct us where to step, what to do, what not to do. Do you understand? The word of God begins to guide us. So it becomes a lamp, a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Begin to direct us where to go. Hallelujah. We must be practitioners or doers of God's word. We must be practitioners or doers of God's word. James chapter 1, verse, verse 22 to 25. It says, Be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Whatever God's word says, as we read, we must be ready to do, to obey, to practice it. Now that you are in Christ, if you want to grow, if you want God to use you, you must consciously practice what God's word says. As you pray for the Holy Spirit to help you, He will help you. Grace abound. Just take the step and the grace will be activated. So consciously make a, a conscious effort to practice God's word. And the Holy Spirit is always there, will help you walk in, in that truth. Hallelujah. So that we wouldn't end up deceiving our own selves. Joshua 1 says that this book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate there in day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. You must meditate, ponder over God's word. Child of God, day and night. Ponder over it. He said, thou, thou mayest observe to do. Take, make a conscious effort. As you read the word, observe. Take notice. Or what the word of God's word says, and practice it and walk in it. That thou mayest observe to do, not to be knowledgeable, not to have a thousand scriptures in your head and begin to quote the, uh, 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 the scriptures just that, just like that. No, be a doer, reflect, live of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. Hallelujah. He was practicing what he was teaching. So, 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 Bible says that we, 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 we must observe to do. He said, when we do that, okay, when we observe to do according to what that is written there, he said, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Then thou shalt have good sources. If you want to prosper, if you want to have good sources, not bad sources. Some people are successful, but through an evil means. That's what Bible says, that fret not thyself over the prosperity of the wicked. No. But if you want to be prosperous, if you want to have good sources, it is not by giving, I mean, it is not through direction or sowing of seed. It is by practicing the word. Yes, sowing of seed have their own role they play. Directions have their own role. But I'm talking about laying a proper foundation that will help the child of God grow in God, mature. When you do that, the devil becomes afraid of you because he knows he cannot toss you to and fro by deception and by trickery. No, he knows he cannot. Hallelujah. And if you want to have good sources, if, 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 if you want to prosper and have good sources, the Bible says we must observe to do. Not just read the word, but we must read and observe mm, to do, to do all that is written therein. Hallelujah. So we are still on God's word. It is the food. God's word builds us up 
and gives us an inheritance, just as food builds us up. God's word. So uh, Acts 20, 32. He said, and now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Inheritance means headship, the state or character or privilege of an heir, right to inherit. He said, the word of God is able to build you. Okay, you will not lose your salvation. The word of God will build you up. As, as you study, as you read, and as you study, as you study it, and you, as you begin to walk accordingly, is said the word of God will build you and bring you to the place whereby you will inherit all that God has ordained for your life. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. So Paul said, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. In, and in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, Bible says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. The word of God is profitable for doctrine, that's for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Hallelujah. So it's balanced diet. Just as in food, we need balanced diet. Hallelujah. So it's good for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. For, and, and for what purpose? That the man of God may be perfect. The word perfect there is a, is a Greek word that means mature. That the man of God may mature. That you, you build up properly as you eat those good food. Not junk foods, but good food. You be built up properly. May be perfect or mature. Thoroughly finished unto good works. That you be mature. Ready to exert good works, ready to work in good works, ready to perform good works. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. And the next point, we say, fellow, uh, we say you also need shelter. Yeah, we need shelter, a place to lay our heads. Amen. And we say that shelter is fellowship. Okay, when uh, uh, maybe it's raining, uh, 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 the sun is scorching, whatever, you you need a shelter, somewhere to stand, somewhere to lay your head and sleep. Hallelujah. So that shelter is the fellowship, is the church service, is the assembly of the brethren. We know the called out ones. We are the church, it's not the building. But Bible says in Hebrews chapter uh, 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 10, uh, 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 verse 25, that we shouldn't forsake the assembly of the brethren as the manner of some is. We shouldn't forsake the assembling of the brethren as the manner of some is. Some, some people's their behavior, their manner of life is that they'll tell you, eh, 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 I'm the church, so there's no need for me to, to go to any place for us to get that. No, Bible says we shouldn't forsake the assembling, the gathering together of, of, of the brethren, of the beloved, of those called out, of those saved. We shouldn't forsake. So make it a point to always be in fellowship. Make it a point to always attend a church service, to attend the, the, the church meetings and church programs. Make it a point to always attend. Hallelujah. We must attend church regularly. Acts uh, chapter 2 verse 46. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple. They continue daily. They continue daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house and did eat meat with gladness and singleness of heart. They continuing daily. They were daily gathering together, hearing the word of God, sharing testimony, singing to the glory of God. It builds you up. It becomes a protection. It becomes a covering. You will receive freshness. Encouragement through the ministration of the word, the song from opening prayer before the service. And listen, there have, there, there have been many occasions, okay, where sometimes I'm, I'm weak, I'm so tired, I don't feel like going to church, you know. But I, I will just try and get myself in there. And there has never been any day that I'll go to church and come back and remain frustrated or remain uh, as weak as I was before I went to church. No, no. No, no. I always come back refreshed. I always come back sound. I always come back encouraged. I always come back empowered. I always come back happy because I was in fellowship. Hallelujah. 
Bible says, iron sharpened iron. So a man sharpened the countenance of his friend. When you are with somebody who sing, I mean, the ministration, the word of God that comes, the testimonies, it, it strengthens you, it encourages you that listen, God is still in his miracle business. He did it, he has done it for this man or that woman. It, you, you will be the next, or you are the next in line. Do not sit at home. Do not sit at home. Make it a point to be going. Bible says that they, they meet daily in the temple. And wanting to, wherever God will plant you, please identify with that local church. And the vision God has given that local church, that Simon God has given that local church, God places you in and, and help play your role. Allow yourself to be trained and begin to play your role. Because God has planted you there for a reason and for a purpose. And we also said you need to exercise. You need exercise. You need to do exercise. You need to exercise your body. You know, once in a while, you need to exercise. You know, it's good. It's good. Exercise is good. Okay? It's good. So, with witnessing or evangelism or so winning, is that exercise. You are exercising your faith. Just as when you exercise, you are putting your muscles to work. You are putting your faith to work. You are putting your faith to work. Witness or evangelism is the responsibility of every Christian to share his faith. Win souls or evangelize, or witness his or, or her encounter with Jesus. To witness your encounter, to share your account, encounter, you are witness. Hallelujah. Both in life, both in your lifestyle and in your words, you are a witness. Share your encounter, share your experience. Share what the Lord has done for you. You don't need to know all the scriptures. If they ask you certain things you don't know, you, you get somebody who knows better. You go back. And, and as you begin to build capacity, you begin to learn. You go now, you begin to share. So you, it's good. You get, the, the more you begin to share, when I started, I, I was feeling so shy. I was feeling so shy. But the more I do it, the more I begin to grow into it. Just as sometimes when you are, you, you are starting a particular exercise, you, you become so lazy and become so tired. Sometimes at the third day, you feel all the pain in your body. And you don't want to continue with that, don't, that exercise anymore. But the, 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 uh, the, the truth is that if you stop, the pain will increase to, uh, at a, I mean, to some extent before it goes away. But if you continue... You realize that once you are doing, the pain might be there, the shyness might be there, the fear might be there, but it begin to wither away and it will fade off. Hallelujah. It will begin to fade off. So we want to quickly look at it. But because Bible says in, in, in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8, it says, For bodily exercise profited later. And we need that, that later. Yes, it, it profited later, but we need that later. So you need to put your faith at work. You need to begin to evangelize. You need to begin to share your faith, share your encounter. Hallelujah. Witnessing or so winning is a command. One, it is a command. We must obey. Matthew uh, uh, 20, 20, uh, 28, 29. It says, Go ye uh, and teach all nations. Go ye and teach all nations. It says, Go. Go is a command. We have been given a command. It is your responsibility. Don't say, I, I just came uh, into Christ, I just received Christ. You know, no, it's, it is your responsibility and it is mine to share. That is why it is good that as, as they receive the law, we must teach them, we must lay these foundations in them. It will help them and it will help us. Hallelujah. So it's a command and we must obey that command. Amen. Verse 20, Ma Ma uh, uh, Matthew, Matthew chapter uh, 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 28, verse 19. So he said, go. So we must go. And in Mark 16, 15, to the same, he said, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Go ye, go ye into all the world. Today, I wherever I am, I'm reaching people outside of my country to the net and even outside of my continent. Do I do physically, one-on-one, -on -one, using all means? 
to push the gospel. It's a command. We must do it that. We must do that. Hallelujah. We must determine. Be skillful and artful like Paul. We must be determined. Be skillful and be artful like Paul. Okay? In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 19 and 20, let me read. This, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 19 to 22. It says, For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. And unto the Jew I became as a Jew, that I may gain the Jew. To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without the law, as without the law, being without the law, that I might, that I, being not, uh, uh, sorry, being not without the law, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without the law. 22. To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. I come on the internet, you go physically, you go whatever, one-on-one -on -one in group, don't block and you do whatever is in your power to win some. You may not win all, nobody can win everyone. No, he said that I might by all means, all means win some. I'm coming to you because I might by all means win some. And I'm encouraging you to also share this message with people. And begin to teach others. So that we might by all means win some. The devil is populating hell. God has called us to populate heaven. And if these proper foundations are not laid, if we think it is the responsibility of the pastor or the prophet or the evangelist or the teacher or the apostle, no, it is the responsibility of every child of God to witness, to share your faith. You can even do that by just sharing gospel tracts. Sending people scriptures, just start. There, there are many ways to start. Start. Don't wait. Time wait for no man. Hallelujah. Paul was very skillful. He was very artful. He always wanted to create. He said, he said to, to the Jew, I became like a Jew. He didn't adopt to their maybe to 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 to, to the ungodly ways and, and manners of others. No, but he gets close to them just in order, you know, to have the opportunity to witness to them. Because he's the light. And we are the light. We must devise ways in sharing the truth of God's word to the nations of the earth. Hallelujah. As you witness, you, op you openly declare that you are not ashamed of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And, and, and that emboldens you. As you witness, you are boldly saying that I'm not ashamed of, 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 of giving to give my life to Jesus. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. When you keep witnessing, you keep you, see, you, you, you keep on becoming bold. You're becoming bolder and bolder each and every day. I'm telling you, you'll be bold. You'll be bold. Paul says in, in Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17, Therefore, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. I am not ashamed. I'm encouraging you not to be ashamed. Teach the, uh, uh, the new, the, the born again believer, the new believer that they must not be ashamed of their faith. They must not be ashamed to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because when they are, if they are ashamed of him, he will be ashamed of them before their father. Verse 7, he said, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. In the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to share your faith. I want to encourage you to teach the, 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 the born, uh, uh, the new believers. These things lay a good foundation so that pastor your work, man of God, so that your work will not be in vain. 
it makes even the work easier for you because the foundation is laid, proper foundation is laid. So whatever you are building on, you are putting on that foundation, you know the foundation is able to carry that load. Hallelujah. And the last thing we want to tackle tonight or this hour or this morning or this afternoon, the last thing we want to tackle, we'll continue another time. The last thing we want to tackle is that we say you need rest. You need rest. You need rest. You see, after all the work, after all going up and down and you do not rest, you break down. You need rest. And that rest is for you to live a worry-free life. That is the rest. Live a worry-free life. Do not what none that you and cry. You must not worry yourself. In, in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, it says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. He said, be careful for nothing. That The Greek word translated, be careful. That careful is, is the word that means anxious or nervous or restless. He said, don't be restless. Don't allow anything to, 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 to make you restless or to make you anxious or, 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 or nervous. But he says, but in everything, in every situation you find yourself in, by prayer, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving make your request be made known unto god let your request be made known unto god talk to your father communicate with him whatever confront you talk to god about it don't worry don't be restless you need rest you have entered into the rest of God. Learn to relax for your body. You know, don't, just live a stress-free life. Whatever confronts you, don't carry it. Cast your cares upon him, for he cares for you. He said, cast your cares upon me. Cast your cares upon God. Cast your cares upon your father, for he cares for you. Don't be anxious. Don't be restless. Don't be nervous. Don't be worried. In everything, by prayer, with supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And Bible says, when you do that, the peace of God that passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So the trouble will be there, the challenge will be there, and people will wonder why you are not shivering. People will wonder why you are not crying anymore. People will wonder why you are not moved anymore, because you cast your curse upon him. Hallelujah. Learn it. Matthew, Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Matthew chapter 6, I'm reading from verse number 25. It said, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. Take no thought for your life. What ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than remain. It said, take no thought. The same Greek word translated thought there is the same Greek word translated careful in, in, in Philippians chapter 4. And the same word and it means anxious. I don't know why uh, 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 in Philippians they, they use the word careful. And, and in Matthew uh, 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 6, 25, they use the word uh, uh, thought. But when you look, because they translated from the Greek into the English. But when you look at the Greek Bible, there is that one word that is there. It means the anxious. So, but Jesus is saying that. He said, I say unto you, do not be anxious for your life. Hey, how is it going to be like? How is my tomorrow going to be like? Am I going to make it? What am I going to eat? What am I going to wear? He said, no, no, no. He said, he said, he said don't worry. Don't be anxious. Do not be anxious. You are now in Christ Jesus. You are giving your life to him. Learn to cast your cares, your burdens to him. Do not be anxious. People are so anxious, eh, 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 they are so stressed, and, and that stress is bringing a lot of sickness and infection into their system. They are killing themselves, heart attacks, pressures are going high. No, be careful, be anxious for nothing. Live a stress-free life. 
Hallelujah. When the trouble come, I am. You know, you know where you are. You know who you are. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, "Behold the fowls of the air." Verse twenty says, "Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, <laughs> neither do they reap, nor go nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father, you understand? Yet your heavenly Father, that is the Father you have come to." The kingdom you have come to, he provides even for the birds of the air, for the animals in the wilderness. He provides for everybody. Why will he not provide for you who have accepted his only begotten son, Jesus, as Lord and Savior? Come on, you have come into God's family. Come on, you cannot go hungry. The devil cannot be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Hallelujah. Hmm. Oh, glory. Mm, mm, mm. Verse 30. Let me jump to verse 30. Wherefore, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast in is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? O ye of little faith. Shall God not clothe you? Will he not feed you? Will he not provide your needs for you? Learn to communicate with him. Learn to pray. Learn to talk to him. Learn to cast your cares. Sometimes when after praying, we cast our care, then we go sit down, then we are wondering, oh, how, how is God going to do it? No, it is not your responsibility anymore. If you handed the case over to him, it is his responsibility, not yours anymore. Hallelujah. Matthew 11. Okay, before we go there, let me, let me. Okay, let, 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 let's quickly jump to Matthew 11, verse 28 uh, 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 to 30. Please, leave us to a free life, okay? Bible says that how many of us, by, by worrying, can add, can add one cubit, or one measure, or one inch, or one centimeter to our height? Come on! You cannot. So what that worry and stress is meant is to is meant is to destroy you, is to is to drain you. So as a child of God, learn to live a stress-free life. Learn to rest in the Lord. So in Matthew 11, 28 to 30, Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, whatever is depressing, oppressing, suppressing you. He said, come on to me. Now that you have come to him, why do you worry again? Why do you worry? You must not. You must not. You must not. Hallelujah. God bless you for making the time. In case you are listening to me, we'll end here, we'll continue with the foundations. After you are born again, what next? That's what we are looking at. What next? If you know, and we learn, and we apply them, we we'll become better. We we'll become, I mean, a very mighty tool in God's hands. God bless you. In case you are watching me and you are not born again, please pray this prayer with me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I believe that you are God's son. I believe that you came to the earth to die for me. Please forgive me all my sins. I love you, Lord Jesus. I accept you today as my Lord and my Savior. Please help me live my life according to how you want me to live my life. Empower me with your spirit. Help me to be a mighty tool in your hands. Help me to bring glory to your name. I thank you for hearing me and for answering me. Thank you for accepting me. Thank you. Amen. 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 God bless you. And God strengthen you. The Lord empower you. The Lord cause his countenance to shine upon you. Please share this broadcast and this teaching. Until we meet again, God bless you. Shalom. Peace. Bye-bye.